Good day, dear friends. Today, I'm going to share with you a few thoughts on We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. This famous line is credited, credited to have been stated by one of our church fathers, St. Augustine of Hippo. He regularly preached on the resurrection, having experienced its power and that of salvation. And that power was evident in his preaching, his writings, and in his very life. And it was similar to that demonstrated by the apostles, the disciples, and all holy men and women down through the ages. Then, why is not that same joy and victory and triumph and power over sin visible in our own lives? Why is it that most of us are living sad, sorry, morose, powerless lives filled with worry and pessimism? Why is it that the majority of us are Good Friday Christians rather than an Easter people? And I mean that literally. One can see crowds thronging all churches including those who do not go to church throughout the year. It starts right from early morning with the way of the cross. Then some places have the live enactment of the crucifixion and then the Good Friday services. Did you know that the Good Friday service is not obligatory? Yet we all feel we must make some reparation for our sins and are prepared to brave the sun, the heat, the thirst, the discomfort, the fast, etc. And we feel that the penance we have endured has surely mitigated our sinfulness. As if anything we could ever do could gain us salvation, which is a free gift in Christ Jesus, as St. Paul will tell us in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and then when the greatest feast of our salvation is about to be celebrated in the Easter vigil and service we have a number of excuses to make and prefer the cozy comfort of our beds and we see many churches and open air services are only half filled it is truly sad that we as Christians have not understood the meaning and the beauty of the Easter Vigil, which traces the history of our salvation right from the time Adam and Eve sinned and were banished from the Garden of Eden, down the ages, till in the fullness of time, God sent his only begotten and beloved son to be crucified as a ransom for us. Having conquered sin and death, now resurrected, we may live with him eternally. Yes, no doubt, we live in a world which seems to have very little cheer to offer us. We face a new day with newspaper headings filled with bad news of genocide, of persecutions, of corruption and power plays, of murders and rapes, of robberies and swindling. There seems to be no morality anywhere, sometimes even in the very place where it is supposed to be upheld. Then we have our own list of pain and sufferings, of problems and difficulties, of betrayals and backstabbing, the lists can be endless. But if we remain in this sphere, lost in the despair and without hope, then we could well be Good Friday Christians. Yet, without the resurrection, Good Friday has no meaning. It only assumes such great, life-saving, salvific significance 
because of the great value the resurrection gives it. In other words, Jesus' death would have been meaningless without the victory, the triumph, and the glory of the resurrection. As St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. Yes, Jesus rose from the dead and was seen by the disciples and the women. And all this has been documented in Holy Scriptures. Now, let us go over Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. The first appearance, as we know, was to Mary Magdalene. The account of the resurrection is given in all the four Gospels, but I would be referring here to the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, 1 and following. Now when Mary comes to the tomb with the spices, she was already grieving over Jesus' death. And then, to deepen her sorrow, now the tomb is empty. And it looked to her as if someone had stolen the body. Imagine her devastation. As she weeps inconsolably, Jesus comes to her to comfort her. And her sorrow is turned into joy, her mourning to dancing. This we see in John 20, 11 to 18, the account. Jesus comes to us too, in our Good Friday of loneliness and grief, of devastation and pain, to bring us the comfort and joy of Easter. Because he lives, we can rejoice. Therefore, Easter people are people of joy. We go to the next encounter. When Jesus appears to the apostles and disciples who were huddled together in the upper room in fear and feeling of abandonment and he gives them his peace. They were wonderstruck on seeing him. He breathes on them his Holy Spirit and gives them a commission. This we see in John 20, 19 following. So too, Jesus comes to us as we sit before him in prayer, in the Blessed Sacrament, in our fears and anxieties and depression, to soothe us, lift us up out of the depths into the light of his presence and give us a purpose in life. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Easter people, therefore, are people of peace, even in the midst of chaos and turmoil. Jesus also appeared to the disciples on their way to Emmaus, Luke 24, 13 and following, when they were sad and dejected, disappointed and puzzled that things did not turn out the way they wanted them to and they left Jerusalem. They certainly had not understood when Jesus told them he would have to suffer, die and rise again. And now their lack of understanding prevented them from recognizing Jesus as he walked and talked with them. When things do not go according to the way we want them to, and we do not understand what's happening and why it is happening, Jesus explains it to us through his word. If only we would read, meditate, and listen to him in scripture. And then we would also find our hearts burning within us. Easter people are not only hearers of the word, 
but doers as well, as St. James exhorts us to be. Jesus then appears to Thomas, who refused to believe that he is indeed risen. John 20, 24 following. But Jesus patiently meets his doubt with the proof of his love. His pierced hands and feet and torn open side. Jesus comes to us too when we question and doubt him and his love for us. When we suffer and cannot reason why. He enfolds us in his torn and wounded heart. And all we can exclaim is, my Lord and my God. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Very often, Jesus comes to us in and through the community. Thomas had gone away from the community, and thus he missed Jesus. Easter people are people of deep and abiding faith in God and in his love. Come, what me. Then Jesus appears to the seven disciples, as we see in John chapter 21. They had gone back to their old way of life of fishing, defeated, discouraged, despondent, and now dispirited at having caught nothing the whole night. He gives them a new vision, a new hope and joy once again in his presence as they obey his word and catch a huge haul. Similarly, the resurrected Jesus comes to us in our weakness and failure, in our discouragement and hopelessness, to fill us with this new hope and fruitfulness as we obey his word. For we know that he holds the future. Easter people are a people of hope and fruitfulness. Then as we go on further, we see next Jesus preparing breakfast for the disciples, knowing that they are cold and wet, hungry and tired, without rest or sleep, having toiled the whole night. Jesus knows our every need even before we know it ourselves. And we leave it up to him to meet and fulfill our needs. He fills us at his banquet of love, the Eucharist, and life is worth the living because he lives. Easter people are people of trust in the Lord. Finally, Jesus heals Peter of his triple denial of him with his triple proclamation of love and service. And this is what Jesus does for each one of us. He heals us in the sacrament of reconciliation. He makes us whole and then sends us out on mission. Easter people are people of love and service in the Lord because truly Jesus lives. This is from the refrain of a popular hymn that goes like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. So therefore too in our lives, we live in hope because of the resurrection. Nothing and no one must have the power to keep us down over and above the power of the resurrection. And that is why if we are an Easter people, we, which we must be, we must be people of praise and hallelujah necessarily becomes our song. The word hallelujah comes from the Hebrew word hallel, which means to praise God joyfully in song. But it doesn't only mean 
singing and praising God in our charismatic meetings where we come together once a week and praise God. But we forget to praise Him the rest of the week. But then, even that is a beginning and something to be appreciated. It is an opportunity for the community to come together and praise God as one body. Before this charismatic moving of the Spirit in the church, we had never even heard of praise, even though the liturgy is rich and full of it. But we must remember that our praise must not only be a lip service to God, but we should praise Him continuously with our minds, our actions, and our very lives, lest we be like the people Jesus condemned in Matthew 15, 8. He said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So joy and praise to God must be the hallmark of our Christianity. St. Teresa of Avila said, A sad Christian is a sorry Christian. While St. Francis de Sales used to remind his followers that a teaspoon of honey attracts more flies than a barrel full of vinegar. Yes, indeed. If we all live the resurrection in our own day-to-day -day lives, we become joyful Christians, truly an Easter people, praising God in every situation and circumstance. For each and every person, whether good or not so good, or even bad as we see it. For with God, no one is better than the other. For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and in need of redemption. Praise unlocks grace upon grace of God upon us. We become new creations in Christ Jesus, as St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Corinthians, to Corinthians 5, 17. Praising God in our most difficult moments, when we least feel like praising Him, unlocks the doors of our heart, the doors of fear, of hurt, of rejection, of discouragement, of guilt and despair, of unforgiveness and opening them to Jesus to enter as we surrender to him not only the areas of pain but our entire beings and yes as we praise him even through our tears something truly beautiful happens a royal exchange as it were and truly a paradox our sorrow is turned into the authentic grace of rejoicing and we are filled with an inexplicable joy and peace which transcends all understanding such as the world cannot give. When we praise God, we join with all the choirs of angels who praise God every moment of the day and night. This is just a foretaste of when we shall be seated in the heavenly places, praising God before his holy throne continuously. This is our preparation on earth for when we shall be singing hallelujahs in heaven for all eternity. And by this, the world will know that Easter did happen, that Jesus is indeed risen, and that we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We remember in the book of Job, how Job was tested by the devil. And in fact, the devil had to ask God for permission in order to test Job. And God gave that permission. He allowed Job to be tested and Job was tested very severely.
to the extent that not only were his uh, belongings all taken away from him, all his wealth and his treasure, but even his loved ones were taken away from him. And when his friends came to visit him, they told him, you know, you must have done something wrong for God to be punishing you like this. His wife even said, curse God and die. But Job remained faithful to the Lord. And he said, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He continued praising the Lord in all times and in all circumstances. So, we don't only praise God in our happiest moments, although it is the easiest and comes most naturally, or at least it should, but we learn to make a habit to praise God continuously with our very lives as we strive to live righteously, and even more so when circumstances are the most difficult, because then the results are most rewarding. Just as Job was rewarded twofold, given double of everything that he had ever had, we too will receive tremendous graces and become more and more like Jesus day by day. Most of us believe in the resurrection with our minds because it has been taught to us from the very first day of our catechism class. But do we believe it in our hearts? Has it become a revelation, an enlightenment, descending from the mind level into our hearts, into our souls and our very spirits, so much so that it transforms our way of thinking, feeling, acting and living? Do we have this firm conviction of the triumph of good over evil, come what may, that Jesus is truly alive and he is present with us every moment of our lives and that we can live in the hope that he will bring good out of every situation in life and we do not have to feel hopeless about anything at all provided that we obey all that he tells us to do. If indeed it is so, then we are blessed beyond measure and we are slowly being transformed and in time will truly become new creations in Christ, as St. Paul tells us. For having died with Christ, we are now living his resurrection. Romans 6, 8. Although Lent is the time which signifies the troubles and experiences of our present time and our dying to self and to sin, Easter thereafter signifies the joy that will be ours in the future. That is why we are indeed an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.